Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to start out really quick because I'm excited about getting this video out. So here are some wire cutters and these are my tubing scissors. They I got those at the Dollar Tree from the Garden Center. We're also going to need some wire, some tubing, and this rapid glue that dries up in 30 seconds and it's good for any surface. This red wire comes rolled up in a big spool that's hooked up with other spools of wiring and they're all different sizes. They come hooked up on this like carousel merry-go-round looking thingy-majiggy at the Home Depot. You guys should go check it out. So after working with so many projects using this method, I've come to the conclusion that the only best way to insert the wire into the tube is to make sure that the wire just like the tubing are rolled up the same size do not even try to attempt to straighten it out because it'll just create swerves onto the wire and that would that's what causes like friction as you're inserting the wire into the tube and it just makes it harder to push it all the way through the tube so when I'm working with long tubing like this, this is about four to five feet long, I make sure I buy it separately. When I'm working with smaller pieces, then I buy this tiny spool and you get more for your money this way. And when you have a small spool like this one, it really doesn't matter if the wire is like curvy or swervy because it's small pieces. You're probably already done inserting it all the way through. I guess it just depends on the size of the tubing. Like right there, you see how I kind of slowed down a little bit. I'm almost done. So what I did, I went to the tip and kind of released a little bit of the pressure and then I was able to pull it, pull it through. Otherwise, if it's a little bit bigger, what you can do is just sway or um, rub your fingers across the tube, just like I did on the longer piece previously. And it'll release some of that tension and maybe smooth out your wire too. Wow, that just sounded like a tutorial. I might change the title to this video. Here I'm just gonna show you some of the shapes that I made for some projects that I do have on the making right now. And basically this here is a petal for a flower. Then I kind of squeeze it on the top to make like a leaf. Then somehow it just kind of popped out of my hand towards the back. I'm turning it into a fish. And this is from a big swirl that I made. I just pulled it out and this is what I got. All right, so this piece is my go-to sampler. So every time I come up with a shape idea, I come and recreate it with this piece and then just let it sit there so that I won't forget to write it down for a future project. There you go, I just created a huge swirl. Now the next is going to be a rainbow that I'm working on. I'm not sure if I want to use a ribbon, macrame rope, regular rope, or yarn. At this point I'm heading more towards brownish tones with macrame rope. All right moving along here's a swirl with a little tail. Now I'm creating a double swirl, one swirl on each side. And then I'm gonna create a swirl like the previous one, but in a smaller version. So basically what I'm trying to say guys, the sky is a limit when it comes to making shapes. Another tip is that if you're creating something where they all have to connect to each other and for some reason you have like an inch or some space, then you can do this number. Spread it out to make it bigger. Or put it back in to make it smaller. And to make this one smaller, you kind of just coil it up in more on both sides and it'll be a smaller swirl. So there you have it, guys. All right guys, these are some of the shapes that I'll be using. And if you want a straight like this one, just add skewer sticks. So now let's move into our project. 
I pre-wired some of my tubing just to move the project along a little bit faster. But I also wanted you to see how this bowl is the beginning of it and how easy I inserted that wire. And it's also because the wire holds the same curvature as the tubing and it's nice and smooth. So here I'm just making two of each of these swirls and then I'm getting ready to start making what I call the crown part of my arch, which is this one here, it's just simple. All right, guys, don't forget to lay out our pieces. Make sure they all connect to each other before we start gluing. I previously showed you guys how to adjust these swirls in case you have any gaps or any spaces. Now here, I'm gonna use these Dollar Tree hooks for this project. They were meant to be for a previous project, but they turned out really cute on this project. Now the objective on the glue is to put a dot on each point that's going to be glued on to the other pieces. Once you're done gluing, there is no wrong side to this piece. Just choose one, which will be the front, and then use the back one to reinforce with the hot glue. So between these two little emblems, I chose the wooden flowered one, and I went ahead and painted it with some black chalk paint. And now I'm just gonna glue it on. make another arch is slightly different than this one and there it is drying up from the black chalk paint that I painted it with all right so we're now down to the part where I'm gonna show you how I reinforced these pieces with some hot glue Last but not least, I went ahead and painted this piece as well as my arches with a black chalk paint from the Dollar Tree. Note that I used the same type of swirls for all three of my wrought iron creations. I wanted them to match and complement each other and also I wanted them to match the Mexican style wrought iron creation that I made. So if you guys have not yet seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I'll link it at the end of the video. And I also love the way my arched creations complement my arched entryways. I thought I'd share with you guys these little gecko sculptures in case you wanted to add that little accent that I did when I hung up my pieces. Now these ones here are pretty big. They're twice as big as these previous ones but they are so cute, I saw them at Hobby Lobby. I really like the way these guys turned out. I like the way they complement that little hacienda look that I'm going for. They just turned out, I mean, I don't have words. I'm in love with these guys. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Hugs and kisses, bye.